this mountain range reaching up to 4,000 meters is known as the Highlands. New Guinea, the largest island in the Pacific, is split between two political entities. In the west is the Indonesian province of Irian Jaya. The eastern half is Papua New Guinea, independent since 1975. Today, a modern road crosses the highlands of Papua New Guinea. But as soon as one deviates from its path, one discovers ways of living that have not changed for hundreds of years. <laughs> Segregation of men and women, body ornaments, face painting, and complex initiation rites all characterize the societies of the highlands. people live in the southern highlands. Hidden in the mountains, they've established a community called a Haloli. A Haloli is a sort of training center where unmarried young men are isolated for the duration of their initiation. Such centers had disappeared for almost 30 years. However, in the 1970s, some school teachers undertook to revive this ancient Huli tradition. This Haloli, in 1985, was the first to reopen. The men here spend most of their time taking care of their hair. They must grow it long and beautiful enough to make a wig. Every day, they untangle and comb it in order to give it the shape desired for the wig. Chanting incantations helps it grow faster. The real objective of a haloli is to turn adolescents into adults by teaching them how to discipline their bodies. It takes about two years for their hair to grow to the right length. Then, the locks are woven together so the wig will retain the shape of a helmet or a cocked hat. <coughs> In the past, woolly boys joined the center at the age of 10 and stayed for seven or eight years. They had no contact with the outside world because they needed to be shielded from female influence. For the Huli, women are polluting agents. They're believed to possess powers harmful to men. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because a man's prestige is partly determined by the number of wigs he owns, some men spend years in the Haloli, making ceremonial or everything. As well as the art of hairdressing, Haloli members learn to sew and the Huli excel in making scalloped decorations. Hair being a symbol of virility, 
Wigs are attributes of manhood. This is Alembo, the leader of the Haloli. Alembo is a very active man. As well as managing the Haloli, he leads a successful political career as regional councillor. But he still finds time to tend his garden, a task usually given to women. Yet Alembo does not lack wives to work in his garden. Out of the ten he married, five have stayed with him. Although with him is a figure of speech, as he does not live with any of them. Alembo is a huli of the old school. He advocates sexual segregation. Polygamy used to be the norm, but it's now limited to a small number of influential men. Here are the five wives of Alembo. Why don't you live with your husband? We are so he lives with other men. Obeying tradition does not prevent Alembo from embracing modernity. He's a formidable businessman, one of the pioneers of chicken breeding in the region. He fattens them up for seven weeks and sells them for 12 kinos, 12 dollars apiece making a profit of around $200 from each breed. How is your business doing? Cattle are no problem. Alembo hardly ever leaves his house without wearing a superbly decorated wig. This one is adorned with everlasting daisies, lichen, cuscus fur, leaves, and feathers. Amongst Huli men, competition runs high for the best wig decorations. As well as chickens, Alembo breeds cattle. He started out by buying two calves and now owns more than 20 cows which he grazes on pastures he planted on the mountain. Mm. 
Feeding cattle doesn't cost much, but you can't sell the animals straight away. You have to wait two or three years. The advantage of chickens is that you earn money faster. Preparing a meal takes a lot of time. The first step is to heat up some stones. This will be a vegetarian meal. Herbs, vegetables, and maratha, a favorite of the hulis. Steam is obtained by pouring water on hot stones that have been mixed with the vegetables. The dish will cook inside a wrapping of banana leaves. <laughs> no women are allowed in the men's kitchen, and the men will eat no food grown or prepared by women's hands, so convinced they are that it would harm their health. <laughs> The Maratha is the fruit of the red pandanus palm, an important tree in the symbolic universe of highland society. The time when the fruit reaches maturity is eagerly awaited, and celebrations are organized for the occasion. After cooking, the flesh and seeds are squeezed to obtain a thick red juice associated with blood, and specifically menstrual blood. Consuming it guarantees good health and gives beautiful skin. Even when they need to talk to him, his wives are not allowed inside Alembo's fence. But Alembo is an exception. Nowadays, many Huli couples live together. Wives, my body would be harmed. I look after my body. I may look young, but in reality I'm an old man. Living with my wives would weaken my body. So I live on my own. I simply follow the teachings of my forefathers. From an early age, Huli boys are warned about the dangers of contact with women. One of the major Huli ceremonies is the Tekka designed to remind the boys that one can never be too wary of women. The actors are teenage boys dressed up as girls. Tickling represents the form of courtship by which girls usually seduce boys. They must resist, or their problems will begin, and the unwitting boys will find themselves engaged. The simulated fight symbolizes antagonism between the sexes. Men who live with women know that they grow old faster. This could happen to me. I know what I'm talking about. We have to follow the way of our ancestors, or we will damage our bodies. To eat well and maintain one's body is not enough. In the old days, the food was so good, and yet the men were strong and healthy. That's because they followed the customs of their forefathers and took care of women. If you neglect women, you put women in the source of strength of their ancestral customs. So I follow them without question. <laughs> The 
appreciation of the young men is the highlight of the holy social life, from which women are always excluded. offers a chance to demonstrate one's courage and resilience. Today, young men go less and less often to the mountains to be purified. What do you think of that? It is not good. Their bodies look so weak. Oh, they if they had followed tradition, their bodies would have developed better. And they would have become men before their beard had grown. If they leave the haloli, they stop developing. also practice a purification ritual for their young single men. Once a year, they go to the mountains and stay there for four or five days to cleanse their bodies and their minds of all the impurities that have sullied them throughout the past year. of the purification process is probably the cleansing of the eyes. Amongst the sites that may have soiled their eyes during the past year are human waste, cow dung, sexual organs, male and female. The leader of the ceremony is an older man, who is also a bachelor. He's looking for a successor, but has the greatest difficulty in finding one. Because of the modern way of life, this ritual is observed much less often. <laughs> When the purification period is over, the young men return to their village, wearing their ceremonial dress. The Enga also wear wigs. They believe that the spirits of their ancestors inhabit them and help the dancers to successfully perform their dances. The faces are blackened because black is the color of men. It symbolizes male solidarity in the group. In the center of the circle formed by the boys, the girls dance around their boyfriends. Now they have become men. They earn the right to be This boy who attends secondary school will one day be part of his tribe's elite. Among the Enga and the Huli, tradition and modernity are not incompatible. This dance marking the passage into manhood will be performed every day for a week.
The face paints and body ornaments are an open book for those who can read it. They reveal a man's clan or village, announce the amount of his wealth, or tell of the valor of a warrior. In the highlands, the human body is a work of art, and its adornment reaches extravagant and sumptuous peaks. Here, in the village of O'Neill, men do not wear wigs. They prefer feathers. Pigeon, owl, parrot, eagle, bird of paradise. The feathers are combined to create a shimmering frenzy of colors and shapes. Since the official abolition of tribal wars, the dances performed during grand intertribal ceremonial feasts have become an outlet for the latent state of warfare that exists between the clans. Body ornaments, songs, and dances, everything in the show must be both grandiose and perfectly organized in order to proclaim the unity, the strength, 